Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar titled A Day in the Life of a Board Secretary. We're so glad you could all join us to this session today and I hope you will find it useful. Just to introduce myself, my name is Lakshna Rathod and I work in marketing at the London office. Your speakers today will be Craig Adam, who is our VP of Sales in EMEA and is based in our London office, and Dr. Ashraf, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Holcomar. Thank you both for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just a few general notes about today's session. This presentation will last about 30 minutes. The session will be recorded and everyone will receive a copy of the recording within the next few days. Please feel free to ask any questions at any time during the webinar by the question window in your GoToWebinar panel at the side of your screen and we will try and get through most of the questions at the end of the presentation. Any questions we can't get to, we will follow up on them individually. Before we start, I would like to briefly highlight what we'll be covering within the next 30 minutes. We will begin with discussing why the role of the Board Secretary is such a fundamental role in any organisation. After that, we will then drill into the key responsibilities of Board Secretaries and how the role helps the wider organisation. And finally, we will highlight what we believe are some best practices. At the end of the main session, we will also address any questions that you may have. Now I'd like to hand over to Dr Ashraf to talk a little more about the work Hukuma does. Uh, hello everyone, thank you so much for uh, being here with us. Uh, just give you a very brief about Haukama. Haukama was founded in uh, 2000, 2006 uh, by the Dubai International Financial Center. It's a non-for-profit organization aiming to spread the knowledge of corporate governance in the region. During the last uh, few years, we have established uh, uh, five task uh, policy task forces. We have developed more than uh, uh, 17 or 18 codes of corporate governance uh, for the region. We uh, uh, have also conducted massive number of uh, advisory services and we uh, established uh, uh, many uh, thought leadership pieces that, that we try to spread the knowledge of, of corporate governance uh, through. Uh, and, and, and also we have created an index with S&P for all listed companies in the MENA region and, and we published a report on 10 years of experience that we have with the region. We trained uh, uh, close to uh, 1,600 uh, people, directors and company secretaries uh, in the past few years. Uh, and, and we are working with our partners diligent in trying to improve the performance of boards and, and company secretaries. And, and that's why we are very happy to be part of this uh, webinar today. Thank you, everyone. Craig. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Lakshana outlined, my name is Craig Adams, and I'm currently standing in for my colleague, uh, uh, Kai Skarabe, who's based in Dubai, who's uh, had to uh, deal with a small family emergency, but I'm very glad to be joining you all and our partners, Hokuma, to uh, talk through this, uh, I think, interesting uh, and important topic. So just to give you a little bit of a background but, uh, about Diligent, we're a uh, global uh, software as a service uh, vendor uh, headquartered uh, out of uh, New York. Uh, we were founded in 2001 and essentially were the first a player in the board portals market. But since then, we've uh, expanded significantly. Uh, and recently, we've uh, passed the uh, the threshold to become one of the top 50 SaaS vendors in the world with an excess of $200 million worth of uh, revenue. Uh, as a global company, we try to think locally and have made significant investments in both international data centers uh, across various different geographies as well as uh, local offices, including uh, one in Dubai, where Kais has, uh, has, uh, is based. And essentially, we're famous for providing uh, uh, probably the best solution on the market that's used by over 140,000 board members, uh, corporate secretaries and administrators across the globe uh, with 70 plus countries. And I think something we're particularly proud of is we, uh, we, we, we relish in delighting clients and have a uh, an industry beating uh, retention rate at 99% that nobody else can really match up to. Uh, now, let me let me start off by just uh, uh, giving you some sort of introduction on the subject why uh, we are discussing this uh, uh, topic uh, today and what is the importance of the role of, of the uh, board secretaries. Uh, on, on the higher level, uh, there are two key functions or, or uh, value adding from company secretaries. The first one of them is actually they facilitate the best practices in the area of corporate governance. 
Now, uh, uh, lots of the best practice that we know of in corporate governance in developed markets are actually driven by company and, and board secretaries. Uh, uh, so, so that's why this is important and also that they ensure the compliance of the board. So there are many regulations covering board practices and functioning. And again, company secretaries are the ones who are making sure that the boards are in compliance of laws and regulations and listing rules in different markets. Now, if, if we get into uh, uh, the company secretary itself, uh, if we really have uh, a, a professional company secretary uh, or board secretary, uh, uh, th there are many things that they will help the company to do. Number one, they will help the directors or board members of, of, uh, of the company to review the most critical information list uh, that they have. So they are able to uh, uh, identify or highlight the key things that the board members have to read, have to be aware of all the time. But they also uh, uh, play a role in the strategy. So they uh, make sure that the board is kept up to speed on the strategy. Uh, this is including discussions for the strategy, uh, KPIs, information, reports, and so on. They play a very important role in this as well. Um, they also play a role in making sure that directors, they act and form a team of players which is built on trust and, 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 and integrity. So they make sure that the board is not islands and with the board and its committees, they are in coordination, in harmony, and, and they make sure that consistency of uh, uh, discussions and, and resolutions by the board and its committees. Uh, and then also they help directors to uh, face any challenges that they might be facing, uh, maybe in areas of getting information, advice, uh, uh, or anything else that they need uh, advice for. Uh, and they finally make sure that the board culture is really founded on transparency and accountability. So they make sure to know who is doing what and they follow up with them to make sure that they are delivering what is expected from them uh, uh, at the end uh, of the day. Uh, Craig? And essentially, to kind of summarize that point, I mean, as the Institute of Directors says, to describe the company secretary, uh, they are and you are, a, 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 as a member of that community, the guardians of, of what the company does to ensure proper compliance, not just with the law, but also best practice to make the, uh, the board as effective as possible in terms of uh, driving forward both change uh, and operational execution uh, within a company. So, 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 so let's look at it. Yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, so let's look at it in a little, in a little bit more depth. So, from our perspective, we see four major areas that uh, you, you can define a company's uh, the role of the company or, or board secretary as. Uh, firstly and foremostly, it's actually facilitating a board compliance to make sure the boards are operating in line with local and international legislation, uh, particularly in areas such as. Uh, you know, management of uh, management of entities in line with uh, local regulations. Also, organising uh, board best practice uh, to make sure the the board is uh, operating it uh, to its uh, true potential and is functioning uh, in a, in a very productive and efficient manner. Thirdly, it's maintaining confidentiality, uh, which is particularly important, uh, particularly for those companies that are looking to undertake a merger and acquisition or divestment activity. And then fourthly, uh, building those board relationships so that individual board members and committees uh, collaborate together effectively uh, and see the uh, the board secretary as probably the go-to person, man or woman, as they look to uh, move forward and uh, perform their, uh, their, their fiduciary functions within the organization. So, Dr. Ashraf? Um, so, yeah, let's have ha a closer look at these four uh, sort of key functions. Uh, now, talking about the first one, which is facilitating the board compliance. In, in, in this respect, company secretaries are, are, are trying to make sure that the boards are in compliance with laws and regulations and listing rules of companies if they are listed and so on uh, regarding its functioning. So, for example, they have to take care of the logistics issues. Um, sending invitations on time to make sure that it is within the frame uh, set the time frame set by by uh, regulation um, who is invited and and how they are invited the location of the board meeting to again comply with the company articles association as well as regulatory issues uh, all the equipment and supporting uh, uh, technology is available to make sure that the board is is, is able to comply with all uh, uh, elements of regulation but also they help to ensure the quorum and compliance at the meetings. And, and by this, 
we don't only mean that they count the votes and how many board members are there. It's in fact coordinating before this with the, the directors to make sure that we do have the quorum before the meeting starts. We know who is coming, who will be participating by uh, technology, if that's available or, or, or allowed in, in, in the market and so on. So they make sure that the uh, meeting is uh, has quorum to uh, qualify uh, as, as a legal meeting. They also draft and collect and compile uh, and deliver, of course, uh, the, the, the agendas for uh, board meetings and its committees. Uh, they uh, draft the minutes for these meetings. They draft the resolutions for the meetings and the reports which are required and so on. And they communicate them well uh, to the board members and uh, board committees as well. Uh, they ensure that directors and executives, they meet the deadline. So when the company is asking uh, the CEO for a certain report or the CFO or the internal auditor, they make sure that these reports come uh, on time as, as uh, requested uh, by uh, the, the board or uh, if a report has to go to the regulator or the uh, uh, capital market authority, then this actually this is done uh, on time. And then finally on the disclosure, they make sure that they collect the disclosures which they are supposed to be uh, uh, disclosing out to the market and also they are communicating in the right manner uh, which is, is, is again, conforming to uh, what they're supposed to be doing, legally speaking. So the disclosures have to be done in a legal way, on a timely manner and so on, to make sure that we are not violating any uh, laws and regulations uh, of the country, uh, country, so which might subject the company to any uh, uh, penalties. Now, on the second function, which is clearly important, uh, corporate governance is not about compliance only. Compliance is, a, is an important part, but then it's really about best practices. So company secretaries, they have a, a very important role to make sure that the board is really going for that extra mile to match with the best practice which are known uh, globally, such as the relationship between the CEO and the lead director or the chairman of the board, uh, developing a, a calendar for the board and its committees to know when are the meetings are happening and where they are happening and what are the key topics discussed in each of these meetings in advance. So the company has a proper calendar which is published properly on their website. Uh, they also communicate the agenda, uh, draft, help, drafting and communicating the agenda to different stakeholders. They monitor the progress, if you like, uh, uh, of, of the different topics which are assigned to the board and they keep records of, of uh, responses and, and interactions with the board and, and the management and the committees. Uh, they ensure that the directors and the committee members are in for the meetings on time so that other board members don't get upset that they are wasting their time waiting for other directors. That's again something which is matching with the best practice. Finally, ensuring the timely uh, preparatory time and delivery time of important information to various stakeholders. So they make sure that every party that should know something, they know it on time in the right format and in the right uh, way. Craig? And the third area that we see the, 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 this role helping support the board is clearly maintaining confidentiality. Uh, these are people that are kind of handling very highly confidential information on a daily basis and clearly uh, board members have a, a duty of uh, care to make sure that they keep this information confidential uh, and in line with uh, you know, the company's best interests. I think this is becoming a more and more important issue as various regulations, particularly in the European Union, which also affect companies in, in, in the Gulf, uh, have to respond to uh, things like GDPR, which is uh, focusing companies' mind on the protection of the uh, personal information of both consumers and employees, particularly looking at the UAE, some of the new regulations around uh, uh, NISA also uh, kind of uh, help support uh, the need to maintain confidentiality around uh, information. Uh, secondly, I think they, they, they serve as the main contact and sounding board for, for the CEO or the lead director or committee chairs on how we uh, maintain uh, confidentiality around information and making sure that when information does have to be released to, uh, to different parties, particularly the market, it's done so in a, uh, in, in a, in a sensitive uh, manner uh, and in line with uh, the particular agenda or timetable that needs to happen. And ultimately, you know, they act as the, the trusted source of information and advice for the board to make sure all information is uh, relevant information to the board is uh, protected uh, in light of its value to the organization. Dr. Ashraf? Uh, yes, finally, the final rule actually is building the board relationships. I mean, it is quite important for the board secretary 
to meet individually with board members. So usually he or she will go to their offices, meet with them, get acquainted with them, know the issues, the challenges that they are meeting and so on, uh, so that they can provide them later on with critical and timely information when it is needed from them. So they will understand the challenges uh, facing every board member and helping them to overcome uh, these challenges. And, and if there are any issues that they see in the boardroom, which which is affecting, uh, 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 you know, that the function and the culture of the board itself, such as maybe some directors interrupting others or commenting in their uh, point of views or undermining them and so on, they would have to uh, escalate these issues with the chairman to make sure that they actually don't happen. Because if you allow this to happen, this will negatively affect the culture of the board and will, of course, reduce the, the um, effectiveness of the board itself. Now, for this, there are very famous tactics, if you like, uh, to improve the you know, uh, quality of board meetings and, and, and the value of these meetings. One of them, which is, which is a very common sense one, which is making sure that you arrange, uh, arrange for maybe some sort of uh, uh, soft drinks and foods and, and, and beverages uh, and, and, and allow the board uh, to mingle with each other. So before the meeting, you have some social time for, for directors to uh, discuss things and, and, and have this sort of uh, rapport between them, if you like. Uh, so this is very important to create the right atmosphere before you go into the board uh, this agenda and calendar and so on. Uh, and of course, the second thing is being the, the, the timekeeper. Uh, so uh, if they find out that some board members are talking too much or some points on the agenda are taking too long to discuss, they would have to remind the chairman that, you know, uh, we need to move on or somebody else has to ex express their, their opinion and so on. So they have to manage the time properly. And if there are some topics which need some uh, long time for discussions, then they make sure that it is actually uh, up on the agenda so that we have more time to discuss, not left to the last few uh, topics where time might be a little bit limited and we not have time to discuss them uh, in an effective way. Uh, in, in many cases, they do organize in, in jurisdiction where you have uh, many non-executive directors, they uh, have executive sessions for them uh, so that they make sure that non-executive directors meet uh, uh, on their own and discuss few things before they meet with the board or after they meet with the board and so on, just to reflect upon, uh, upon the issues that they think are, are very important. They also look at the previous minutes of the board uh, to make sure that whether there are any key decisions that were made or any important elements that they have uh, have to be raised again in, in, in the following board. And they make sure that there is enough time allowed for you know, key decisions and discussions. So one of the things that they have to take care of is there is sufficient time to discuss every uh, element on, on the agenda, uh, which, which is sent to the board members. And then finally, they collect the uh, to-do list. So after the uh, meeting finishes, whether that's for the board or the committees, they have that checklist of what are the resolutions taken, what are the items uh, that they have to follow up with, and who is uh, responsible for what. So they make sure that every single item, there is a person or a department responsible for that, and they follow up with the departments to make sure that there is a response which is happening. Uh, finally, sometimes they discuss with the board members whether they have a formal survey, a written survey, or just oral survey on what can be improved uh, next uh, uh, in the meeting, how can we have better agenda next time, and so on. So that's also the job of uh, the company uh, secretary. Uh, again, it's, it's all about how to have effective board meetings. Uh, Craig? So, so uh, essentially, how do leading uh, organizations look to uh, tackle this topic and make uh, both the board and the company secretary role as effective as possible? Well, they do it in a number of ways, but at heart, uh, in the same way that lots of organizations are, are looking to move forward with digital transformation of how they operate as a company, as they maybe look to look at new digital channels to market for consumers, or they look to use technology, perhaps you're a manufacturer, to start getting information back from your assets in the field. Transforming what, how a board operates uh, digitally is the way that we see most leading organizations look to, uh, look to make boards as effective as possible. And putting in place essentially a, a system that enables you to uh, collaborate and exchange information for the board uh, instantaneously, which and then accessed by uh, the users and the uh, board members as they're either in the office or traveling between meetings, uh, and essentially do that in a, sec in a secure way so that the information is, is held uh, and essentially sensitive information isn't, uh, isn't breached in any way. And by taking that approach, uh, it absolutely de-risks 
uh, any chance of uh, information becoming lost, but also makes the board and the company secretary more effective as they can do real-time updates to uh, information as you pull together board packs and then distribute them uh, so that uh, directors can access them effectively and, uh, and easily. And we recently did uh, a series of, uh, I suppose what you would call them surveys, with a whole variety of different uh, boards in different geographies. And essentially, kind of, uh, of, of the assumed uh, responsibilities of board professionals, it seemed that a large part of uh, the time of a, of a company secretary and the team around them was utilized in meeting preparation, whether that was pulling together the uh, meeting pack itself or uh, acting through uh, the meeting minutes after the, uh, after, the, uh, after the board meeting itself or the committee meeting. Uh, and essentially all this was taking time and effort with not necessarily adding a huge amount of, uh, a huge amount of value to uh, the actually effectiveness of the board and the decisions that they made for the company itself. Uh, and, and the same is true with uh, some information that we've got back from the Association of uh, Board Governors of University and Colleges that under, undertook a, a similar survey where they found that actually probably almost two thirds uh, of, of company secretaries were spending uh, less than half their time on stuff that was really important to the board as opposed to the more administrative uh, activities that just needed to happen to make sure that meetings happened in an effective way. And essentially, that provides an opportunity for ultimately automation of these activities to free up company secretaries to take more strategic work with the board. So I don't know if some of you have heard of uh, Peter Drucker, but he is essentially the, the granddaddy, as it were, of the management consulting industry. And he said you know, this is what he's had a number of famous quotes, and this is probably one of his more famous. There's nothing quite so useless as doing with great efficiency something that should not be done at all. And I think what he's trying to say essentially is, where possible, if there's low value tasks that are essential to an organization, ultimately automate them. So you can, even if you do it quite efficiently at the moment, so you can concentrate on the higher value items that are really gonna make a difference to uh, you know, your customers. And in this case, as a company secretary, your customers are ultimately the board and the stakeholders to the board. So the way that we see that done, uh, and we've been doing a bit of work recently, is to come up with what we've what we've termed our governance maturity model. So we tend to find that uh, boards could be anywhere on uh, this scale, but typically, really, most boards start at the bottom, where actually maybe the first uh, activity they want to take down this journey is look to uh, implement some sort of board application or board portal to essentially digitize their meetings and make sure that you can swiftly and efficiently distribute uh, board materials. Secondly, then we what we tend to find is boards then look to go, go maybe the next step along this journey. They then start to automate and digitize some of the other processes outside of just the distribution of board minutes. Uh, maybe that's actually minute taking itself or starting to introduce electronic voting uh, or the recording of resolutions as part of the board. The next step we then see on more forward boards looking is then looking to broaden the use of these sort of uh, technologies into uh, other areas, maybe looking beyond just the board itself to uh, other stakeholders. Maybe if you're dealing with external regulators, maybe there's a way of automating some of the forms that you need to, uh, need, 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 need to produce for, uh, for, for the regulator or perhaps you want to do things whereby you start to syndicate information and provide information, maybe a short snippets of videos or something to the board to keep them educated on what's happening in the, uh, in, in the economy or in corporate governance around them. And probably the top level of maturity, once you've done all the others, is mainly full, uh, fully digitalizing and uh, automating as, as much as possible anything to do with governance of an organization most typically around entity management for uh, international corporations to make sure that you can automate compliance with local regulatory needs. Perhaps a company who's incorporated within the UAE maybe also has various different entities in uh, maybe the UK or different parts of Af Africa, and maybe make sure all those entities are uh, in, uh, easily compliant with 
with local regulations, but also provide real-time dashboarding and analytics around how uh, the company as a whole is performing to make sure the board uh, uh, is, is particularly well informed about uh, company performance. And to provide for organizations that are on that journey and looking to improve governance uh, uh, gradually, uh, we provide a whole series of different solutions from a board management portal uh, to other areas such as secure messaging between board members as they uh, work remotely or automatic minute taking or a kind of, you know, the evaluation framework. We provide an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, set of uh, portfolio of solutions that are integrated to make sure that we can help uh, move you on that journey and essentially using Governance Cloud, which is our, uh, our, our name for this portfolio, to uh, help you perform your, your role more effectively uh, through the use of automation, but also make the board and the decisions they make uh, as effective as possible. So we've come towards the uh, end of the webinar. Uh, should you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact my colleague, Kais, whose email is outlined on the slide. And clearly you'll have copies of these uh, via recording, but also the slides themselves if you want it uh, after the fact. But also I'd call on you to, uh, to, to look at either our website, www.diligent.com, or the Horkema website, horkema.org, uh, and there's a whole plethora of uh, different uh, types of content that you can uh, access on there to hopefully make you more effective, whether that's white papers uh, on board effectiveness or corporate governance, uh, and maybe some case studies that we have of organizations we've worked with uh, in the GCC that might be of interest. But also feel free to reach out to us if you want to have a, a demonstration just to understand and contextualize some of the things that we've uh, that we've said today. So look, I, I know we've got a, a couple of minutes before the end of the end of uh, the webinar scheduled. But Lakshna, can I hand over to you? Are there any questions that uh, that have come in that you'd like myself or Dr. Ashraf to answer? Um, one question has just come through. Um, someone's asked, "Do you offer a meeting minute solution? If so, what's the best way of getting a demo?" So, yes, we, we absolutely do. Uh, we can demo that at your convenience. So the best way to uh, to achieve it is if you could uh, email Kais uh, on the email uh, and we'll follow up with an email from uh, Kais himself. As I said, he couldn't make it, but please arrange a, uh, reach out to him and he can uh, arrange a demo at a point that is uh, convenient for you. Okay, and um, we've got one more question that's come through, perhaps for Dr. Ashraf. Um, what can we do to allow for better engagement between the board secretary and shareholders or third parties looking to discuss the corporate governance in the company? Well, I mean, the best practice is for the company not only to have uh, the company secretary, but also, of course, uh, investor relations officer who actually usually deal with, with that question from the shareholders and, and potential investors for the company itself. But, of course, I mean, uh, the company might decide that the board secretary will also interact with the shareholders who are willing maybe to know more information, have some concerns, have some issues uh, to raise, or maybe sometimes even need to educate them a few things, because we have seen from attending uh, uh, AGMs that uh, sometimes uh, shareholders are not aware of how to raise issues and how to put points on the agendas of, of, the, of AGM and so on. So again, I think it's an important subject, and, and as part of our certification for company secretaries, we train them on how to interact with different players, such as shareholders and, and, and other potential uh, partners. Lovely. Um, no further questions from this side. Excellent. All right. Well, look, I would just like to uh, thank you all for your time today, and in particular, thank my uh, our partner, uh, Dr. Ashraf from Horkema, for joining us on this webinar. Uh, as I said, there are various different uh, points where you can access additional information or content or if anything in particular jumps out please uh, contact my colleague Kais we'll be happy to interact with you uh, directly but thank you very much for the session uh, and I wish you all uh, a very successful uh, day ahead thank you very much